I'm going to show you now some of the separate components of our index, so you can see this kind of uh, scale of uh, differences. This is a measure of trust. It just asks people, do you agree that most people can be trusted? So it's a measure of how much we feel we can trust other people in society. At the more unequal end, on the right, only about 15% of people feel they can trust others. But in the more equal countries, it rises to 60, 65%. That makes a difference to what a society feels like to live in. Almost every aspect of well-being. Community life weakens with more inequality. Um, in fact, what I think we're seeing is that that intuition that people have had since before the French Revolution, that inequality is divisive and socially corrosive, the data says that's true. It's truer than we ever imagined. I may say that we've done all this work twice. We did it on these rich developed countries, and then we repeated it looking at the 50 American states, asking just the same question. Do the American states with smaller income differences do better on all these measures? And the picture is almost exactly the same. All the problems that are related to inequality internationally are also related to inequality amongst the American states. This is mental illness. It's not simply people coming to their doctor and saying that they're depressed. It's uh, figures that the World Health Organization put together to allow us to compare levels of mental illness in different countries. They use the same diagnostic interviews on random samples of the population in each country. And in the more equal countries, it's, you see it's the percent of the population who have any mental illness in the preceding year, in the year before the survey. And the more equal end, about 8% of the population had some mental illness during the preceding year. Depression, anxiety, whatever. But in the more unequal countries, the rate is three times as high. Huge differences. <coughs> I'm sorry about my throat. <clears> throat> um, this is life expectancy. It's not such a close relationship. It happens to be the, the one I worked on first. Uh, there are several years of difference in average life expectancy related to inequality. Um, this is infant mortality. The figures come from reliable sources like the United Nations, the World Bank, OECD, World Health Organization, um, and we put them all in. This is drug abuse. This comes from the UN Office on Drugs and Crime. It's figures on the use of opiates, cocaine, cannabis, ecstasy, and amphetamines. These are all statistically significant relationships. It's a clear tendency for more unequal societies to have more drug problems. This is obesity. Um, this is men and women together. It's a closer relationship if you look just at women, but both sexes, obesity is related to inequality. Teenage birth rates, huge differences here. This is violence. Violence is one of the best researched relationships. Uh, there are about 50 uh, research papers in the academic journals showing in different settings that violence is more common in more unequal societies. These dots are American states, and at the bottom left there's some little triangles which are Canadian provinces. There are tenfold differences in violence shown there. At the bottom left, it's about, uh, there are about 15 homicides per million population, and the top right, 150. Tenfold differences in violence related to inequality. This is... Um, the proportion of the population in prison in different countries. It's harder to tell where uh, numbers are on a log scale, but there are about tenfold differences in the proportion of the population locked up in different countries. And most of that, research has shown, is not more crime, it's more punitive sentencing, a harsher judicial system. In the United States, we also find 
that uh, the, country, the American states that keep the death penalty tend to be the more unequal ones. The prison regimes are harsher um, in the more unequal societies. If you have to go to prison anywhere, go in one of the more equal countries. You'll get some, perhaps, re rehabilitation. If you go in the unequal countries, you'll come out brutalized. And uh, lastly, social mobility. This is uh, social mobility measured by income mobility. It's really asking, do rich fathers have rich sons and poor fathers have poor sons? <clears throat> or is there no difference between father and son's income? Sorry, no relationship between fathers and son's incomes. Where there's high social mobility, where people move up and down the social ladder, uh, there's very little relationship between father and son's incomes. And that's truer in the more equal countries again.